Most, if not all of you, will realize that we are in a season of prayer and fasting. How many people are praying and fasting? Okay. It's not too late for you to join us. We've got uh, seven more days. We end next week Sunday, so you can join. Amen? Amen. And we're fasting primarily over a word of prophecy that was delivered now. It's three weeks ago, three Sundays ago. And so I want to share very briefly because we're going to take our prayers for today's fast today after the, uh, during the service. I want to share very briefly on the role of prophecy in the church and in our lives. The role of prophecy in the church and in our lives. In Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, Amos chapter 3, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible says, surely, and when God says surely, you know that there's no alternative. Surely, the Lord God will do no thing or nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? So God reveals his secrets to the prophets. He reveals what he is about to do. He does nothing without telling somebody what he's about to do. Jesus Christ said, henceforth I call you no longer just my, 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 my servants. You are now my friends. And there's, no, there's nothing I will do without sharing it with you. So what is prophecy? Some people think prophecy is fortune telling. Prophecy is when somebody speaks with divine inspiration. The words are as if they came straight from the throne of God. That's prophecy. Okay? And I talk about prophecy that ends with C-Y. Prophecy with S-Y is prophesy, speaking. So prophecy is a word that has come by the inspiration of God. It may come through a vision, and we'll look at one that came through a vision in the Bible. It may come through a vision. It may come by a messenger. It could come by any means God chooses. If you remember uh, the story of Balaam and the donkey, he spoke to men through a donkey. So God can use whatever means he chooses to bring a word of prophecy. Two things about prophecy. The first is that no prophecy, no prophecy, whether an angel appears in your room and gives you a word, no prophecy will ever contradict Scripture. Okay? So if you heard and if you believe you heard from God, but it, it, it is contradicted by Scripture. It didn't come from God. Amen? So that's the first thing. And, and you know, if somebody gives you a word and says, the Lord said, you are to divorce that your wife and marry another, that contradicts Scripture. Amen? That contradicts Scripture. And so it didn't come from the Lord. God would not tell you to do something that displeases him. Okay? Now, I know some people are now sitting on the edge of their chairs because they want to divorce. <laughs> Don't. But you see, our God is a, is a loving God. There are times when... Divorce becomes inevitable. 
it doesn't please God. But he is and always will be a God of a second chance. And divorce is not the unpardonable sin. So I'm not saying I'm against divorce. I'm saying God is not pleased by divorce. So if uh, no, no, no human or angel should come to you and say, divorce your wife, marry another. Amen? The second thing is that the Holy Spirit will confirm in your spirit if a word indeed has come from God. I know prophets that will come and say, brother, I saw a coffin and I saw you in that coffin. But God, I prayed for you and God gave me the breakthrough and said, just bring a special offering. <laughs> That didn't come from God. The Holy Spirit will recoil at such a, a prophecy. I, I don't know if you, if you know how to hear from the Holy Spirit. It comes with practice. It comes with devotion. The Holy Spirit will confirm. And, and also, scriptures say, out of the mouths of two or more witnesses, every word is confirmed. Now, what does God do with prophecy? God uses prophecy to redirect. If you've gone, off, gone astray, he uses prophecy to direct. He uses prophecy to guide. This is the way walk ye in it. He uses prophecy to guide. He uses prophecy to encourage. He uses prophecy to deliver. He uses prophecy to, to bring the abundant life into the lives of his people. Amen. Prophecy often concerns that which is to come, but not always. Prophecy may concern that which has passed. God may, may, may open your understanding, may bring a word to you that something in the past is affecting the future. So you need to deal with that thing that is past so that it no longer affects the future. So God can bring prophecies concerning that which has gone behind. God can also bring prophecies concerning the present, today. When we have a prophet in the house, everybody wants to know what tomorrow brings. The point is that sufficient is the evil thereof today. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Amen. Now let me take an example of prophecy. We have an example in Ezekiel chapter 37, you, you know the story. The valley of dry bones. Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord was upon me. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. From this day forward, the hand of the Lord be upon you. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and, and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry there's a way the Holy Spirit brings detail detail he took him to a valley and he saw at first glance that it was full of bones, many bones. But the Holy Spirit began to show him another perspective. These bones were very many and they were very dry. In other words, they had decomposed 
and they had been there a long time. And then he saw something else. He saw that they were fragmented. One piece of the, one body here and another one maybe many yards away. And this, I believe, is the pivot of the vision and explanation that Ezekiel is teaching us in this valley. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? God, the creator of all things, the one without whom anything is made that is made. God, who is pre-existent, who has no beginning and has no end. God, Kabiaosi, the unquestionable changer. God is asking a man a question. Can these bones live? And this is a very important question because going forward from here is going to depend on the answer that Ezekiel gave. If Ezekiel said, no, these bones cannot live, that is the end of the matter. Because he is saying, I know you are the creator of all the he heavens and the earth, but this one that I saw, those bones are so dry, I don't think even you can make them live. So Ezekiel didn't say no, because he knew no is not true. If he had said yes, which many of us would say, hey, Ezekiel, if you had faith, you would have said yes. Well, as I meditated on this, I knew that yes was the wrong answer. <laughs> because yes is to say, the next question God will ask, oh, how? Oh, yeah, make them live now. <laughs> no, he said no. He said, Lord, <laughs> this is beyond me. You haven't made your will concerning these bones known to me. Lord, you alone no. Thou knowest. And because he answered right, the next thing God said is prophesy. Prophesy. That word prophesy is spelt with an S. It means speak by divine inspiration. And not only did he tell him to prophesy, he told him what to say. See, God doesn't want you to miss even the slightest tittle in his instructions. He wants you to get them, so he gave him very precise instructions. Prophesy unto these bones. Now remember, all this is in a vision. Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear, hear. Brethren, hear, hear the word of the Lord. I'm talking to somebody today. Hear the word of the Lord, for it shall be well with you. It shall prosper you in the way that you go. Hear, hear, hear the word of the Lord. And God will use you abundantly. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. So, first saith the Lord unto these dry bones, unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Can you imagine? I mean, some commentators, I've read some commentators like Matthew Henry, have said this is a type of the resurrection um, on the last day. I don't, I just like, to, I just like the simplicity of the scripture, so I'm not going to interpret uh, that but God himself as you go down in the verses said 
Israel had lost hope. And they had said, we are fragmented. Like bones have been fragmented and, 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 and removed from one another. And God said, I'm coming back to show you that you can live. Now watch this. These bones were once flesh, had flesh and blood and breath, but they decomposed until there was nothing except bone left. And God was saying through the word of prophecy, by prophesying unto this hopeless situation, this impossible thing, you can reverse, you can reverse the decomposition. Can, can you grasp that in your mind? Muscles, sinews, flesh, skin would begin to come back. Not a new skin, but the old skin that was there from before. And I, I've shared about prophecy this morning so that you will begin to prophesy. It is not only prophets that prophesy. Any child of God can speak by divine inspiration once they place themselves in a position to become vessels that can speak for God. And you can speak into your life, you can speak into your circumstances, you can speak into your situation. And I'm speaking into your situations right now. And I declare that every adverse situation that has come against you, contrary to the will of God, is reversed. It is reversed in the name of Jesus. And you know that, that prophecy has more power when you take it and speak it yourself. Every adverse situation, every sickness, every infirmity, everything that has come against me contrary to the will of God is reversed in the name of Jesus. So, we need to take more time to prophesy. Now, God told him, prophesy Flesh will come back, skin will come back, breath will come back. So I prophesied, verse 7, as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Can you imagine across the valley, you just see bones flying, flying, <laughs> flying from one corner to the other. <laughs> And when I behold, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Mission is not complete. If you prophesy into your situation and you do not see the completion, go back to the Lord. There's still more to do. So, God says, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. The wind is the ruach of God the breath of God, the Holy Ghost. And there are times when you need to prophesy to the Holy Ghost. You say, Holy Ghost, come into this situation. Bring breath into this situation. Bring life into this situation. Oh God, glory, glory. Is somebody feeling a little better? You weren't feeling very well when you came in here this morning. Are you feeling better this morning? Are you feeling like God has got this 
God has got this. He is doing this. God is working. He's got this. Amen. And for some of you, we shall see the evidence in another nine months. Mosha kata karaba bosheke. Koraba boshekete. final part of this prophecy. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Your end, and when I say end, I'm not talking about the terminal part, point in your life. I'm saying your end. Your ending season shall be far greater than your beginning. This exceeding great army that had the breath of God in it could not be defeated by anyone in the name of Jesus. And so, here, what prophecy does both in the church and in our lives. In the church, we need to be mindful. We need to be on the watchtower to intercept the plans and the speakings of, of darkness so that we can begin to speak Makasata. Go in this your strength. Go in this your strength. And nothing shall overcome you because the Lord who is God he is with you he keeps you hallelujah let me tell you a secret I am a kept man I'm a kept man the Lord is my keeper the Lord is my keeper <laughs> He's my strength. Hallelujah. 